We'll start this talk. Um, this is going to be the dark side of legal security, the American way. So uh, there's a lot of companies out there in uh, information security that do things legal, illegal. But the Ill legal ones don't have to be necessarily ethical. They could be very bad. So we'll go through a little bit about this. Um, this is my first like official type of talk. I just got a job over at Georgia Tech where they do uh, malware analysis and research. So I got to like, I got to say these stupid things that I'm, I, I'm just speaking for you guys. I'm not speaking for any person I work with or previous employees. It's just me and you guys. So you guys know the, the nice pretty details. All right. Good. All right. So my name is Chris Magistrato. Uh, you can find me on Ty Durden uh, on Facebook. I, my Twitter is this, and then my my email is that. Uh, as you can see right there, I do like your server, the Heartbleed server, and I like to go and have some fun at some raves sometimes. So, um, I'm probably saying, who the fuck is this guy? Um, I went to San Francisco State University. I found the hacking club at SF State. Uh, I was a security analyst for about a year and a half at a specific company. I won't say the company. Um, reverse engineer, malware researcher, and I've attended uh, DEF CON, B-Sides in Las Vegas, as well as San Francisco, uh, CCC Camp, Bay Threat, and, of course, Escape. Yeah. Uh, um, we'll start off by a quote. Americans are great, but Italian women are better. This is a true statement. Very true. And thank you all. So we'll start with the hacking culture just general in the United States. So um, it used to be very communal. Um, Jeff Moss, uh, right here, the founder and creator of DEF CON, it used to just be, the first DEF CON used to be 100 friends, similar to how this one is here, probably just really, really close people hanging out, talking, sharing security ideas, and having a huge level of community. Later, things got bigger and bigger. The next event was 200 people, then 400, and just it kept growing from there. Excuse me. There's about 22,000 attendees at DEF CON now, and it's it's a huge party, um, but it's not as it used to be. It's not as communal. It's not as uh, close to the culture as Escape is, or Esk is, sorry. Um, on the right is Bruce Schneier. He's the, he wrote the Modern Cryptography um, and is a very big contributor to DEF CON as well, just, just in the fact that you know he attends, gives talks, and everything else, similar to how many of you do as well. So thank you for giving back. All right. And then there's also m other types of people that are in um, said community. So we have um, multiple pe Actually, every one of these uh, people have been arrested. Um, uh, we have uh, political activists. And then we also have um, uh, people that just want to learn. Other scientists who just do it to push um, how far they can you know, do things. We have Kevin Mitnick on the left side who is a hacker in the... 90s who got wrapped up in the whole like oh you hack yes we know that's completely illegal we just just go to jail right now um to snowden on the right side who's very politically motivated and uh wanted to share what the nsa was doing with not only the american people but every person in the u.s um yeah so all right so defcon um cost 240 dollars it lasts four days it's in las vegas 22,000. so that's about 5.28 million dollars to deal with now, um, the a lot of these talks deal with like uh, exploiting different vulnerabilities in um, big brand name uh, companies such as Cisco, Apple, this and that. So they have actually subpoenaed the founder, the hoster, Jeff Ma, saying you need to provide every single customer information, every single attendee, because they're doing illegal things. They're talking about illegal things, and we want to know. Um, who goes to these events? So Jeff Moss, he said, no, fuck that. No, we're not going to do that. We only do cash. So he doesn't have any records of any of these people. So that's one little legality loop that you know that you know the founder is at the on that level is on your side. There is a lot of feds that attend, but that's that's beside the point. Uh, it's held in Las Vegas, um, conference size, villages, user friendly uh, area. There's over 200 talks, lots of alcohol. It's not free. Um, so one of the big differences between uh, this conference and a few other ones is that this, especially 
in the U.S. This is one of the most communal ones. And as you can see, there's a lot of people, so you have to worry about a lot of different types of elements and things that uh, the smaller ones you don't really have to worry about. So it becomes less personable. So this is why I love Esk. Like, it's it's exactly where I would rather be. So, so this is DEF CON. And the next one is the RSA conference, $700 to $1,700, six days. It's also in Las Vegas. Um, no, it's not. It's also in San Francisco. Um, and then most of this is recruiting. You start up a uh, security company. You get a little gazebo that costs like ten, twenty thousand dollars, and then you you go to some parties and you throw parties. Your company throws these parties, and then you have other engineers, researchers come in. You buy them drinks and stuff like that. But it's really just saying like, yo, you see my dick here, right? Like, like yeah. Like, we're doing well. Like, come join us kind of thing. Um, and a lot of these, a lot of the people here are making really, really good money. They're making at least, like, 75000 to $150,000, $200,000 a year. Um, so these people are very, very well off. Um, and it's, it's all networking, so you go shake hands with not only the people that are technical, but then the douchebags, assholes that sell the technology that are just like, Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you do this, yeah. We we have this friend and always smiling, always looking like fucking douchebags and assholes. This, this, these guys, you don't fucking want to talk to. No one wants to talk to these people. Black hat. So two thousand five hundred ninety nine dollars for one ticket. It lasts two days. Um, and this is another fucking networking party where you just go and say, oh, I I um I do this, whatever this, and you find other places to start working. So this one. Um, is a little, RSA as well as Black Hat, you really don't personally pay. Your company will pay for you to go. They'll pay for your hotel. They'll pay for um, all your expenses just for you to go and show up and shake some more hands and meet some more people. Um, on the left there, you can see Jeff Moss, uh, the founder of DEF CON. Um, second, to the, uh, second person on the very right side, so that person in the, the orange or tan color that's a uh, bruce schneider again uh giving another a keynote talk i believe so these people are opening up the speaker so these are high level cso's like google cso might be there uh yahoo amazon these are like the, the 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 biggest of the big people that would go shake hands and if you want to start a business or you want to work for them like directly you just talk to them they say send us your resume and uh, yeah you got the job it's fine and then you just start making stupid amount of money. Again, my dick's bigger than yours. Come to my party. I'll cash you out. I'll do all this stuff. And we do this in security, this and that. A lot of people think like these security companies might be fighting each other. But when, when it comes to this, we just party and drink. And and then we're, everyone inside is friends with each other. Whether you have competition or not, you're still friends and hang out and stuff. So, All right. So one of the biggest differences... Um, that you can figure out when speaking with somebody, especially American, is what do they do? So if somebody says information security, they're most likely working in financial or some other types of business that is a more private sector. If they say cybersecurity, you can bet that they work for a three-letter agency or something close to it. Maybe they're a contractor of some type. So these, these little keywords will tell you exactly what kind of work somebody does. So if they say cyber defense or cyber security, if you're doing something, you just, just shut the fuck up. <laughs> All right, so $76.9 billion is the total uh, projected uh, information security spending in 2015. And... Um, this is a lot of fucking money, obviously. So there's a lot of companies that just start brand new startup. That's like, you know, if you have an idea, you just find a rich person to say, to fund you and give you money. So right now I got a buddy who's looking for about $2 million to start up his company. And right now for the large majority, it's him and maybe a few other people, two, three, four people, right? So your salary is going to be paid off very well. You're going to have all the infrastructure you need and stuff like that, and you should be able to last a little while. So um, you can break up those salaries in however you want, percentage of company, equity. There's many different types of ways to do this, but I won't go into the huge business aspect of it, just saying that there is a lot of money in security, specifically in the United States as well. All right, so America is very Sue happy. Um, 
And the joke, this joke says, a good lawyer knows the law. A great lawyer knows the judge, you know, saying that, you know, you'll just get right on out because he's like, oh, we went to college together. We partied together. Um, you know, it's all you, you'll get off. Don't worry about it. Um, but right now we're talking more about um, uh, legal cases in terms of, of information security. So there's financial exhaustion. This, so this happens when two companies sue each other, Google versus Facebook or whatever the fuck. And they just know that the lawsuit will happen so long that they'll just try to break down their finances. Usually it happens between uh, David and Goliath. So you'll have Google suing this tiny company who just started. Uh, they have a patent on something, and Google wants it, so they'll sue them. And then they'll just sue them for, like, they projectedly will sue them for, like, five years. And then they'll spend a few million dollars. And then the little company doesn't have um, enough money to keep sending the lawyers and keep sending, so they have to close up and become bankrupt, at which time Google takes over. Um, there's also royalties. Um, with, so, so like carpal tunnel. Um, so let's say you have a job in the United States. You've been working for, you know, two, five, five or ten years, and you're you're let's say you're you're older and you're gonna retire in another five years. If you're making um, maybe a hundred thousand dollars and you're projected to work five more years, but you get carpal tunnel, right? Um, and it's because the, the place where you're working, because you're on the computer, you can sue your comp you can sue that company for the amount of time that you would have normally worked up until and the amount of salary you had. So that's five years for a hundred thousand dollars. That's half a billion dollars that you're suing for. If you because the work gave you carpal tunnel, um, and this is just oh, one of the many cases of how um, American lawyers are used. So this is actually very critical to um, this entire talk because a lot of these security companies have to do in with legal battles. Okay, it, because information security companies they don't protect against from getting hacked. They protect against from being sued. Right? This is a huge concept because. A lot of people say, like, I'm hiring you so we don't get hacked. But it's mostly you're hiring them so in if you ever have to deal with anybody else in court, you can say, we did our best. Look over here at said company. All right. So we'll go into two case studies uh, about this specifically. So the first one is uh, Target versus these banks. Now, um, when Target got to um, compromise with their PO, if you guys aren't familiar, Target's uh, POS systems, their point of sales, um, got fucked up, and they started, uh, they lost, I think, 100, it's, the first projection was 110 million uh, credit card information as long as, with people. And um, these banks had to reissue new credit cards and uh, debit cards out, and they had to do a lot of things, and this cost them money to do so. So because Target was supposed to keep all this information safe, they then sue Target. And this was a big lawsuit. They sued them for a lot of fucking money. So these five-plus banks got together to create a lawsuit and sue Target for this. Um, they sued for what's called punitive damages. So um, these damages um, exceed simple uh, compensation and awards to uh, publish the defendant, meaning that you know anything that... The banks had to pay out of. Um, we're gonna go after um, Target for. So the CEO, this was him before he got fired. Um, the banks won, and they won 200 million dollars uh, because they said that's how much it cost them. I don't know. Maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. But you know, you, again, you can see like how having a security company to have prevented this could have you know saved 200 million dollars. So if you're a security company and you you say, hey, if you give us a million dollars, we'll make sure you won't lose $200 million. And this is how a risk assessment happens. We'll go a little bit more into that later, but this is a large part of, of security. Um, again, protecting not from being hacked, but by being sued. All right. And then, yeah, uh, right on after the, I believe it was the new CEO, if not, or the chief information security officer, told um, Congress that, or um, the government, uh, we will be hiring pen testers after this. So sorry about that. 
And the the fact that they're hiring pen testers is also a huge um, it, it, it's a huge public move telling the customers that you know we're doing our best um, that we're doing everything we can. And that's you know the truth is yeah it's like um, you just got hacked. Obviously there's holes. And then the thing is um, Target knows about like most companies they know that they have security holes. They know that overrunning oh, PHP 5.2 what the fuck. We know we're running Apache, you know, whatever. We, we're running uh, Linux kernel 2.7 or 2. Point whatever. And they know these things. But what they do is they analyze the risk. So they wonder what's the percentage of us getting hacked? You know, is it high, medium, low? If it's low, then they won't do anything. If it costs them, you know, uh, if it might potentially cost them money, they won't do it. So uh, I always like to use Amazon as a reference. So if an Amazon server goes down for 30 minutes, that's a few million dollars. So you can't have those servers go down. So you just leave those vulnerabilities running. You just leave, you just keep it running because if it goes down, you're losing lots and lots of money. So it's just better to keep it up because it'll cost, you know, less if it gets hacked. So, and this is how pen testers get hired, uh, specifically by Target. They're like, oh, you know, um, they got hacked. Now you need pen testers. We're the guy. So at this point, it's being best friends with that CISO or whatever. And it's like, oh, our company will do that. We're really good friends with you. And that's how you get those big level contracts is you know somebody or somebody knows somebody. And that's what the, those sales teams are for. So you hire your sales team or people, sales team, who know people in these big ass companies. Oh. All right, this is case number two. So this is the bank versus you. This one's a little bit more interesting. All right. So a company or bank has a legal obligation, legal obligation to protect all customer information. Um, the plaintiff or the victim has to prove beyond a reasonable doubt, and that's a big case, beyond a reasonable doubt that the company was negligent, that they messed up in handling your personal information. And this can be pretty difficult, especially if you're not tech savvy. You hire your lawyers to do this stuff, and if you don't have lawyers, you become tech savvy or figure figure out this stuff. You, you can join a class action lawsuit and say, I was a victim, and... You know, it makes your case more powerful when you have hundreds of million or millions of people that are on this class action lawsuit, right? Okay, so here we go. So bank, um, you become a victim of identity theft. You can prove that the bank was negligent, that they fucked up. So the bank loses and you win, saying that the bank didn't do everything they could. They didn't do this. They didn't do that. They they only spent this much money trying to protect their servers. They didn't do a good job. So bank loses, you win. You get you get um, royalties and anything else that it costs you. So if it costs you a lot of money to you know get your new credit card, it costs some heartache. You you get all those back in punitive damages as well as other types of uh, funds. But um, so but let's say in this scenario, uh, the bank then hires a brand protect or you know a protection company. So um, this brand protect company will say they scan the entire internet for phishing sites via code templates, image recognition, and keywords. They find this um, phishing page. Um, they save all these domains that they find. Uh, they so they find a phishing site like Bank, this Bank of America one, and then they send automatic DMCA acts to the hosting providers as well as the ISPs. So this means you draft up a letter. It doesn't have to be a specific like legal format. It just has to say, you're breaking the law. This is copyrighted content. If you continue, we will pursue legal action. Um, basically saying, we will sue you. We will contact you, sue you, and put you in jail. It's, it's this huge threat. So now the banks, the bank, this bank hired Brand Protect, and they say, you know, we're doing our best. We pay Bank Protect $1 million a year to protect you from getting hacked. And if they can do this, and this is proving without a reason, this the person cannot prove without a reasonable doubt that they were negligent. So the negligent part 
just fades away because the bank did everything, everything that they could, and you lose. You lose any money that you lost from that bank. That's your fault now. Um, so these banks hire these security companies because they're like insurance policies. They protect them from you suing them. And this is what a lot of security companies are in the United States. They're, they're legal protection. Um, but as far as, let's say, uh, brand protect, it won't stop at just phishing websites. Any website that has legal content. So this could be blogs, mobile app sites. So if you have, um, if you have an app store or uh, a, a streaming website where you have videos, if any of those contents are owned and copyrighted by a U.S. company, they will send a DMCA app to you. They will send it to your hosting provider and your ISP saying, like, this person's hosting illegal content. If you don't shut them down, uh, you're breaking the law, and they'll just keep going up. So I, I send you the hosting provider. You're hosting this website. I say, you need to take this down. You're hosting illegal information. You don't say nothing. You don't do anything. You don't respond. We go up to your ISP. We contact them, say, you're hosting... You're, you're helping them host this illegal content. You're li legally liable. We're coming after you now. And it just goes up and up the food chain until your server's off. And this is, this is I think this is an issue simply because the United States is going around to other, com other companies that are in different locations, other companies sending out these uh, DMCA acts saying, you need to obey our U.S. law. Um, you know, some website like, you know, Baidu or uh, other websites that have streaming content, they make a lot of their money from traffic, uh, ads. And, you know, they don't have any malicious intent. They just are some person that just wants to have a website up and make a few bucks. And, you know, you have this other big corporation, America, basically, coming in saying, you can't do this. This is our copyrighted content. You are breaking the law and we will come after you. We will find you in jail. We'll, we will send our lawyers after you. You will owe us money, and you will go to jail. So, yeah, we got Hitler. He wants to see all the DMCA acts everywhere. Um, but the most sickening truth to all of this is that it's a fake threat. Um, so what happens is uh, as you're sending out 200... So I said you, you, we send out automated DMCA acts. So you could do 200, 300, 400 DMCX a day to all over the U.S., uh, all, anywhere that you're targeting. So if I have a client, um, maybe uh, Pokemon. Pokemon's my client, and I see a bunch of fake Pokemon Go um, websites or something where they're trying to steal customer information. I, I just scan the entire Internet. I see 500 instances of these. And then I, I automatically send a DMCX to those 500. Um, as a security company, we do not have that money to sue those companies. We don't have, or those people, there's just not enough money out there to expedite them. So wherever they're located, let's say China, we cannot send our lawyers and our, our whoever to, uh, to go to contact their authorities, arrest them, bring them to the United States, um, pay for the court battles, and then eventually put them in jail. Most, Almost every single U.S. company cannot do that. So all these DMCA acts, they're basically empty guns. The empty bullets, they're in fake threats. So they just do this so they scare uh, other companies or other people to take down their content because they don't want to deal with legal liability. They're afraid, you, you know, you're having all these issues. America's coming at you. It can be scary. But it's Almost every single time, it's a fake threat. Um, in yeah. regards to like the Pirate Bay or bigger <laughs> groups like that, those ones are not fake. They will and are coming after you. And if you ever get that big, you need to hire lawyers. Be a little bit more.
Okay. Uh, I made a little flow chart of exactly what happened. So you receive a DMCA act, and then you wonder, are you in the United States? If you are not in the, if you are in the United States, you better comply or move the fuck out that country. If you are not in the U.S., um, can the copyrighted content holder lose lots of money by host uh, by you hosting your content? So, is it something like Paramount where they're losing lots and lots of money because every single person wants to go to your site instead of the movie theater? If it's a no, keep doing what you're doing. If it's a yes. The next question is going to be, um, can they afford to, you know, do all the legal things, send the lawyers, extradite you, and bring you into court? Um, I forgot the no, but if, if they cannot, pirate on. If they can, you should either comply or move your business um, because they will – or they'll take it down. Um, simply said, like, they will come after you and say, you need to take this down, and, and it's a whole legal ugly battle after that. But um, so yeah, in uh, specifically in the United States, I I've noticed that there's a lot of ethical hacking jobs, ethical things. There's a lot of legal jobs as well, but there's just there's just a tiny slither of ethical and legal jobs. Right now, I'm chilling over in academia, and I'm learning as much as I can because, um, you know, I I, I personally just want to learn as much as I can to do as best as I can, whatever it is I want to do. But um, there are a lot of companies out there that you know, you'll they'll pay you well. They'll sit you in. You'll have a nice job. You'll get a little plant on your desk, and you can just hang out and relax. Um, but you know, the things that you're doing, you might be pushing down that little guy in another country that, you know, you you might not see the the full spectrum of what happens. But um, at least at the time when you get hired. But you know, after working at said companies for a while, you'll start to see and understand exactly what you do. And then from there, you could really decide if this is something that you want to do. But, um, great. Yeah. Um, so, you know, how do these, qu how do these security companies start up? Like they just don't spring out of nowhere, right? Um, yes and no. So, um, there's something called VCs, venture capitalists, and these people are stupid rich. They have lots of fucking money. Um, they are people that have millions and millions of dollars or are companies that have millions and millions of dollars. And you just, you know, you show up and you just give them an idea. You say, I have this uh, great idea. I want to scan the internet, but I want to scan for all the all these malware, collect them, and then have a database and then run tests and, you know, do something, right? The, guy, the VCs are like, I like this. This is a great idea. Um, let's do it. Um, how much do you want? Two, five, 25 million? Sure, sure, it's fine, take it. And then you're funded. So then you got your money. Uh, seed money is the beginning. Uh, Instagram started at $500,000 for their seed money. And then in one year, they had $7 million to go spend. And again, like, don't, I, I know, I understand that Instagram's not a security company, but it's a, it's a state, it's a, it's a icon that we can use. I'm sure most people are familiar with it. Um, you know, and jumping to spend $7 million in less than a year when your company is probably the size of that room that you guys are, are, are sitting in right now, it's a lot of money to throw around. You're going to have some parties. You're going to have a lot of fun. You can be in the heart of San Francisco, L.A. You can, do, you can be wherever you want. Um, you know, if it's an American uh, venture capitalist, you're probably going to be in the U.S. I don't think they're going to want to have a, a company outside the U.S. They might, but um, that's all legal things. We're not going to go anywhere near that. And then a year later, $50 million, you get more money, more money to blow, more parties, you know. And now instead of that size room that is you guys are sitting in right now, now it's double that size, but you have a gargantuous more amount of money and everyone's happy and enjoying it. Here you go. Here's an actual security company, Tenable Network Security. They are to be on the uprising and are huge um, over here in the United States, they started their Series A at 50 million, and uh, a few years later they got their second Series B. And I maybe I should say these money, this money is like kind of like a loan money. So they'll give you, yeah, take 50 million dollars, whatever you need. Um, take 250 million and turn this around, and we want you know a lot more back afterwards. 
um, well, essentially, a lot, some of them are we want the money back entirely. Some of them are like we want a percentage of the company. So getting a 20 or 50 percent of the company, however much money that company makes, you get a large mo- amount more back. Maybe so the VCs might be making a few billion dollars within the next 10 years because of this. So, um, but yeah, so uh, it, can you get a job in the U.S. Uh, last last year, some some of my friends were asking me and. You can do it. Um, there's a lot of jobs, and a lot of it is who you know and stuff like that. Um, because I shared this talk with you, because I have a lot of friends that are sitting in that room. Um, everyone in that room is my friend now, and um, if you add me on any of my social networks and medias, I will try to get you a job here if you would like one. Um, depending on what you do, I'll try to help you out if that's something you're into, and if not, that's chill too. Let's just kick it, and I'll be in... Um, I'll be in Congress uh, in December, and I should be at ESC next year. So, um, but yeah, that's that's about it. Oh, and just don't be this guy, because these fucking assholes, uh, they, they get thrown money around. They so like they get like stupid amount of salary, and all they do is use automated tools. So you get paid one hundred twenty thousand dollars to run InMap. Like, the fuck are you doing? <laughs> so. Yeah, but I, I'm sure a lot of people like in that um, over there are a lot more technically savvy than a lot of these dumbasses here that get that know somebody got in the company and aren't aren't don't know what the fuck they're doing. So, um, thanks. Uh, are there any questions? I, that that wraps it up for me on my end. Thank you.